<laughs> Finally, I have introduced the perfect lace of bees to this hive. It took years and years of waiting, but I finally found the perfect lace and I've introduced them to this hive. And they said it couldn't be done. They said you couldn't find bees with mild temperament and bees that do not swarm as often and bees that are disease resistant. And I finally found this bees and I will prove the world wrong or my name isn't Hector Von B. <laughs> Let me check on these bees. I must take a look at them and see how they are doing. Let's see here. Okay. Let's take a look here. Oh, bees. Oh, bees. Oh, bees. Oh, no. No, no. These bees are local bees. They are mutts. They, are, they, they have the local traits. I, I do not understand. Oh, I've done so much to work at the heart of this. And all I have is these local bees. Well, what am I to do? Good afternoon, beekeepers and bee enthusiasts. How are you doing? It's another great day at the farm. And we're hanging out. It's a really nice day out right now. It's about mid 50s. The sun is shining, so it feels really good outside. Of course, we got some bee activity coming in and out of this hive right now, and that's always a really good sign. It shows that you're, the health of your colony is doing pretty good during the wintertime. Anytime you have warm days in like, you know, January, February, it's always good to check out your hives. You should see some activity coming. When I say warm activity, I generally mean over 50 degrees. Um, and then if you see some activity going, that's a, that's a good sign. Um, and so these bees are doing good. We're doing good. We hope you're doing good. And of course, we have an excellent topic for you today. And of course, today we're talking about don't waste your time chasing honeybee races. Now, I see it all the time out there. People are always saying, hey, you know, I, I need that perfect honeybee race. I need either some carnolians or I need some Italians or I need some Russian honeybees. They, need, they want the perfect honeybee. And a lot of people will even have honeybees shipped from like Europe all the way over to the USA just so they can have a certain type of honeybee in their apiary. And today we're gonna to be talking about why that's kind of a, a waste of time. And also, as you have a bee or group of colony of bees that stays in the apiary, over time they will become increasingly local. They will assimilate to the local area of the honeybees. So it's gonna be a great topic. We're really excited to talk about it. And without further ado, let's break right into it. So a lot of people out there are chasing the perfect honeybee race. And what I mean by that is they are going after certain types of traits for their honeybees that they want in their apiary. And these traits could be something like, maybe they, they're more mild of a temperament, Maybe they don't swarm as often. Maybe they're more disease resistant or maybe they produce more honey. There's all kinds of traits that people are chasing and they will order bees from Europe or something like that in order to get the perfect honeybee queen in their apiary so they can get the perfect traits and they get super excited about it and they really think it's as easy as that. But as Hector Von B found out earlier, it is not as easy as that and honeybees inside of your apiary become increasingly local. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's start off by talking about how honeybees function whenever they produce new queens. Now, of course, honeybee queens lay eggs in the, in the hive, but what they will do, honeybee queens, when they are born, they will go and mate with honeybee drones. Now, if you don't know what a drone is, it is a male honeybee. And a male honeybee doesn't do anything except mate with queens. It doesn't work in the hive. It doesn't collect honey. It doesn't do anything. Its whole purpose is to mate with honeybee queens. So the drone will go out and it will go to the drone congregation area and look for queens. And a new queen, when born, will go and mate with queens. Now the queen will mate with anywhere from 10 to 20 drones from all over the area. She doesn't just say, well, I just want this hive that I wanna mate with. No, she's mating with drones from all over the area. And it will usually be anywhere from 10 to 20 drones. Usually on average, it's about 15. But she will do that and she will come back to the hive. And of course, when she comes back, she is carrying genetics from all over the local area. And that is how honeybee queens mate. And that is where they get their genes from. They get them from, air, from honeybee colonies all over the area. 
So new honeybee queens, when they're born, they are pretty local in terms of the eggs that they're laying. Now let's talk about that old honeybee queen that you just introduced to your hive and that she's got the perfect traits that you like. Well, we all know every spring, most honeybee colonies prefer to swarm and they will try to swarm. And when they do so, the old honeybee queen or the one you just introduced will leave with half of the colony and go search for a new home. So they will leave with the, with the portion of the colony, it's anywhere from a third to half of the colony. They will go and search with a new, for a new home and there goes your nice beautiful queen you just ordered. She just went out the window and now she's going somewhere else. And guess what? The new queen you have is the one that just mated with all those drones and now that new queen has all the genes from the local area and now even though that new queen might have some genes from the old queen she also has genes from the local area as well so bees over time become increasingly local and that is the case there's nothing you can do to stop that it doesn't matter if you ship in queens every single year that have certain traits those bees are going to change and they are going to become increasingly local and then another thing i want to talk about too is let's talk about the complications that you might find with introducing a new queen now when you have a queen that that is put into your hive they have egg laying patterns and what i mean by that is they will lay eggs at certain types of certain times of the year based off where they come from now honeybees in warmer climates will generally lay eggs sooner in the year because it warms up sooner and they will stop laying earlier in, in the, as, the, as the year progresses. Now, and it's the opposite for bees up in, in the colder areas. They will generally wait longer in the year before they start laying eggs, and they will, la they will lay eggs later on into the year than you know a queen from a warmer area. So if you introduce a queen from a really warm area into your apiary and you live in a cold climate, then she might actually start laying eggs when it's still freezing outside. And she will start laying eggs and then it can really screw up the brood cycle and then she won't even be laying a lot of eggs during when your primary honey flow is. So you can have a lot of complications with introducing your queens from far off distances, okay? They can, they can have really weird egg laying patterns and it can be bad and the, the colony can end up failing. So it, it, there, there can be complications with that and really your best bet is just to keep it local keep your bees at the local area and just you know collect them let them let them reproduce and and not waste your time too much with going and looking for different races so honeybees will become increasingly local and really they become more or less like mutts and really that's just how honeybees are because honeybee queens will mate with all kinds of different drones from all across the area and so they get genetics from all over the area and that's just how honeybees are so you know it's kind of it's kind of a fool's errand to sit there and try to say hey i'm going to try to just introduce a certain race of bees into my area and and keep bees that way and when people ask me they say well what race of honeybees do you have i always tell them i have local honeybees I have honeybees that are in my area and of course local honeybees as I've said a million times before they're the best honeybees you're going to find local honeybees are the healthiest you know they are used to your climate remember when I told you that if you get queens from a far off area that it can have weird egg laying patterns well local honeybee queens know when the eggs are supposed to be laid around here they know when your honey flow is they know all that stuff. So local honeybees are the best bees you can find. They're going to be good to go and they're going to have the best traits for you. And whenever you are looking for bees, rather than trying to chase a certain race of bee or anything like that, you should be trying to chase swarms. And if you look behind me, of course, there's that beautiful swarm hive we have right over there. It's meant for catching swarms. It's meant for catching local honeybees because that's the best race of honeybee that I want that we want in our apiary and so we are chasing local honeybees and that is what we're going after and it really is as easy as that and you know i know some people might think well you know maybe if i put this certain type of if i put like 10 colonies of this certain race of bees in my apiary then it'll 
it'll transition to that. And while yes, you will kind of introduce those genetics to the area, it's the, the, the honeybees are still going to assimilate into the local genetics. And it, it doesn't matter what race you bring or how many colonies you bring, you know, eventually they're gonna assimilate to those bees and they're gonna become increasingly local. So what you need to do is, is whenever you are trying to be selective of honeybees, the only thing selective you need to be is what kind of swarm hive you're going to use or you know how many swarm hives are you going to put up or are you going to catch them in a swarm hive or are you going to catch them in a main hive and you can catch them in a main hive too you know and it really is as simple as that get your hands on some local bees i promise you you will be much happier and guess what the bees have a much higher chance of succeeding if they are local versus if they are some bee that's introduced from a whole continent away and it really is better than that i wouldn't buy that stuff you know don't don't waste your money on different races of honeybees because you just really all you need is the good local bees and they're going to give you the high chance of success so that about wraps up our video and we hope you enjoyed it get your hands on some local bees and remember they are the best you can find and they're the best you're ever going to get anywhere and until next time we'll see you soon